Boya Kasha, check out my car. Nay, no, nay, no. Coppers. As you've never seen them before. Whoop, whoop. It's the sound of the police. I pay my taxes that pay all these wages. With the recession biting. Nine coppers for one lad. Are you relax? ridiculous? And unprecedented cuts to their budget. Need officers now under attack from a group of about 40. The police are under pressure. Oh, you fucker. Yeah, we've just been bricked. As crime rates rise, the officers hit out to let us know what they really think about us. Humanity has long since negated its right to existence, and nothing will shock me what happens. Sorry. From the elite armed response teams, I'll risk assess that and decided not to engage that threat. To the rookies, fresh out of training. <laughs> and hitting the streets for the very first time. Drop it, no! To the hardened veterans of the dog section. Tracking down the most dangerous suspects. <laughs> and catching them. <laughs> Mate, get on your front! Get on your front now! <laughs> Putting the bite on crime. 24-7. Get your hands on the wall now! There was 200 pounds of pressure in a dog's jaw and when it bites you. Find him. When you start talking about arms and Fine. thighs, they're a little bit more fleshy. So there's a lot more for the dog to hold on to. We are that short on the ground at the moment and some people's opinions are have, has an animal got a place in a modern police force? Well, people will generally argue with police officers, they won't argue with the dogs. Some of the dogs have got phenomenal bites and they do break bones. You can't control the pressure the dog decides itself to put on a bite. The main concern is that the dog will stop somebody. The dog section is a mobile force of 16 handlers and their dogs. Two teams are always on the road to tackle some of the most dangerous criminals in Nottinghamshire. There's two jobs running at the moment. There's, uh, there's just been two robberies within seconds of each other. It's one of the tools that we possess that the criminals really fear. Dogs are very much the cavalry of the police force. If the shit sit in the fan, there's nothing better than some dogs turning up. You two, get over there! Go over and stand by over there! If you get out with a gun to a lot of people, they know you're not going to shoot them. Back into the shop! Back into the shop! If you look at the dogs working on the street, you see that the, the dogs' tails are wagging. People say, that dog won't bite me, he's wagging his tail. Well, his tail's wagging because he knows he's probably going to get to bite someone. Oh, 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 do do as I say, do no harm, you understand that? They could probably bite you five times in under a second. Watch him! Watch him! You never know what's around the corner, do you? A bit of excitement to finish the day off. I want to play with you, son, did he? Eh? He want to play with you, son. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Good boy. God, once you're hooked, you're hooked. You're in Good this boy. car with your best mate. <laughs> Give up, son. Out there, hunting villains. What is better than that? Nothing. A German Shepherd's teeth may be the ultimate weapon for the police, but for all the police dogs, their most important asset is their nose. Everything has a smell, really, and it depends on what you decide to train that particular dog on. You know, if you say to me, I want to train it on buttons, or, you know, I want to train it on whatever you think of anything, and I could get that dog trained on it. 
Daniel the Spaniel is a specialist sniffer dog. He's leading a dawn raid looking for narcotics. But these dogs can detect far more than just drugs. Sterling, euros, bodies, body parts, ammunition, seamen, and all sorts of other things. Firearms, component parts of firearms, even little springs out of guns and things. Using scent, the Spaniel can find materials invisible to the naked eye. They've even had to look at stuff under microscopes. And it's there. <laughs> there we go. And it looks like cannabis. In the last five years, the section's 13 sniffer dogs have taken part in more than 2,000 searches. Good fella. I've been screwed as a sob. And last year, the German shepherds made more than 300 arrests. <laughs> PC Andy Pickersgill and his partner Blade Good. begin a night shift. It's 10 to midnight. A man has escaped firearms officers who want him for questioning. A tracking dog is the only hope of finding him. We have a runner. We have a runner. The one thing you want to hear is, yeah, we state six is run off. That is music to your ears. Because you know at that point, that's down to you then. And, and that's when you get excited. All Nottingham's dog officers are trained in high-speed driving. Every minute that passes makes these chances of success slimmer. Oh, just drive past it, just drive past it, mate, and we'll walk down and... Uh... Blade arrives at the spot where the officers lost the suspect. He searches for the telltale smell of adrenaline. You know, it's the Rolls-Royce of, of noses. I always relate it to the Bisto advert, where the... And they say, Stand still. Stand fucking still. Get your fucking hands on the wall now. You know, life don't get no better than that with a dog. Yeah, the top end, mate, up where my car is. Moments later, the firearms section arrived to make the arrest. That's what the dog can do for you all the time. Day in, day out. So whether that's wanted for an offence, wanted for a murder, wanted for anything you like, it don't matter to the dog. That's what we have to go. <laughs> That's lovely, isn't it? That was really nice, that. I like that. When it comes to tracking, it's the dog who's in control. The problem is, wherever the dog goes, uh, he's in charge and we have to follow. People wake up in Nottingham and they find that the wheelie bin's at the side of the fence and a few deck chairs. That's where, normally where I've been. Oh. Fucking hell. Oh. Fence hopping gets harder as you get older. Much harder as you get older. <laughs> they are beyond repairing whenever Andy splits his trousers, so I don't bother basically. Well, as you can see, I'm a big lad, so um, I, I find it easier than some colleagues. Oh, that, that was a mistake. Too. <laughs> Get off! But when you see some of the uh, younger villains, the way they fly over them, uh, <laughs> You know, stuff like that, you've got, you, you're never going to get over in a month of Sundays, no matter how good you are. The dog section tends to attract a more mature, older officer. Got no trousers left. You obviously, your knees tend to go a little bit and you tend to get a little bit slower. And it hurts, but it's all right. No hole. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Does swearing help? Oh, by fuck, yes. About you. Come on, in the back. PC Steve Fury was an armed response officer for five years. He's been on the dog section for 15. Let's get comfy. Right. Wearing body armor makes it more uncomfortable than anything, anyway, so. I'm not sure this seating broke. <laughs> Steve and his dogs, Ari and Daniel, are beginning a late shift.
At midnight, he responds to an urgent call. A resident in a homeless hostel has been stabbed in the stomach. I'm releasing a police dog when the dog finds you, remain still! Find him. His assailant has disappeared, but is thought to be hiding behind the building. I mean, obviously you don't know what you're going into, or whether the person is armed and armed with what. Keep this door shut because the bloke wanders around with a knife. There might be violence, either shown or suspected or whatever. Do you worry about what's going to happen? A little bit. Man is at. After a 25 minute track, the hat is all that's found. It is a difficult place to work the dog section, it always has been. There's been a long list of casualties in the time I've been here. There has also been a death. The dog section is the only department in the Nottinghamshire force to lose an officer killed in the line of duty. On the 9th of January 2003, dog handler Jed Walker went to assist his friend Andy Pickersgill, who was tracking a thief. The suspect fled and hijacked a taxi. PC Walker reached through the window and grabbed him by the collar. At which point the lads were driven off down the road. Uh, with Jed obviously still holding on to him through the car window and holding on to his dog on the lead. Until such point that they've hit a uh, set of bollards in the road. He died two days later of his injuries. It's just to your left ear, look here. A memorial stands at the spot where PC Pickerskill found his friend and radioed for help. You don't really hear that, Officer Down. Not in English, please. And I remember getting at the scene and it... Yeah, it was terrible. I don't want to talk about it now. But it was horrific. I had to go down and see what it was, and obviously when I got there, you met with that, you know, one of your colleagues laid on the floor with his head smashed in. And what do you do at that point? I was under no illusion, having, you know, seen injured people before. That was it. And then I'm just, you know, trying to talk to Jed and comfort him as, as best I can. It, it was a mate of mine. It was nobody's martyr. It's not on my mind every waking minute or the first thing I want to think of or the last thing I think of before I go to sleep or wake up. But it's not far from that, most days. Would I do the same thing? I'd like to think I'm nearly as brave as he is, yeah. Would every cop have done it? No, of course he won't. Do I wish it hadn't happened? Of course I do, yeah. Jed's dog Kai survived. Unable to form a bond with another handler, he was adopted by the prison service. I've said it to myself a million times, the only thing that you will change on that day is that two second decision that's made inside of the car by Jed. And that's the difference between Jed and a lot of other people. Mm. And that's what made him what it was. You know, and that's what I would strive to be. No crime is a lot better for society. What a wonderful place it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. With no crime. I'm a good philosopher. I just can't explain it without fucking swearing all the time. That's a problem. <laughs> A police dog may enjoy a working life of six years before it retires. After that, the handler starts training a new puppy. PC Stuart Hazard is on the second dog of his career. 
Well, Razor is relatively new. I've only had him a few months out on the streets. That dog will put his life on the line for you without even thinking about it. If you compare the, uh, the kind of women that I've known in the past, the dogs are far more faithful, loyal, truthful. Back you up when you're in trouble. Fiddling now, look. <laughs> what, Blade here? Put Terry's card on. Does Blade talk to you? Blade talks to you all the time, but I think as part of that relationship, he just sits and listens. So if I don't think it's worth saying, I don't say it. <laughs> Most of the conversation the dog is about it trumping. It's mad blade, isn't it? The bond is just unbelievable. My dogs have saved me from countless kickings and assaults. You know, he's been there to defend and uh, you just can't tell it. You just can't explain it. It is just a bond that's un un unreal. Stevie, two minutes, then come. Steve Abbott now trains dogs and their handlers. He was a handler himself for 34 years before he had to retire at 60. It only lasted a month. I was at the Wise Brothers and stuff when we got a text come through on my phone saying, can you come back? Of course, I didn't need a, a second uh, thought on that. And I was there straight away. <laughs> I could tell you whose dog on the section it was outside that door by its bark. You know, you think, oh, must be a big mouse behind the door until you open it. You spend hours and hours and hours with that animal. You know, he's, he's like your right arm. At home, he's a pet. At work, he's a, a colleague and a friend. There are aspects of dog handling that uh, are not very good, really. Cleaning shit up all the time. Do you do any dog jokes? Uh, I've got a cracking one, but I can't tell you that one on TV. She's a good girl. All I can tell you is how much we, we love and care for them. What a clever fella you are. What a clever You know, clever it brings tears to my eyes just thinking about when I've had to put my old dogs down. Bert was my last one, which was a springer. He just laid in the hall. And, uh, anyway, uh, And then when that's done, then we lift them up and put them in the car and take them to the... God, this ain't good, is it? <laughs> and the guys of the... Uh, I've already dug you a grave and you place him in. We just care for them so much. They're just part of the family and we love them. Go on! Yeah! The court system at the present time uh, favours the criminal. Yeah, you know, they get a slap on the wrist. But if they get bitten by the dog, it's, it'll hurt for a long time and it's, it will stay with them forever. He's summary justice, isn't he? You know. Less than a quarter of Nottingham's criminals who come up against a police dog actually get bitten. But another group of residents suffer dog bites all the time. Blade bit me the other day on a football match, top and bottom of my belt here. Bicep, left bicep. Right wrist, right calf, the backside, both legs, both forearms, left knee. They're just nibbles, though. My ex uh, ex wife used to say that you used to have fantastic legs before you had that dog, and now it looks like a shark attack. In the testicles, which was quite painful. <laughs> In fact, very painful. At headquarters, a new dog is learning the old tricks. It's all about standards. Tony Chambers joined the section two years ago. At 45 years old, he's still a rookie. That's Shana, they are. He's been a coal miner, a military policeman, a firearms officer, 
and provided personal protection to the Dalai Lama. You can't shut him up. You have to tell him to shut up. Will you please shut up? There's a lot of police officers, wouldn't they? They know my first name. They know me as Monkey. Um, and some people say, well, isn't that derogatory? And I'm like, oh, no, it's my nickname. Everybody should have one. Every organisation, every department, every film crew, every dog section needs people like Tony Chambers. Taze it all? Thank yeah. You. I'll just grab mine then, just in case, never know. Every officer on the dog section has access to an array of weapons, besides their dog. The Taser is a sort of a plastic type gun. You know, the perception of Taser is that it's, it's a horrible thing. But, you know, if, if I gave you a choice of, of being electrocuted for five seconds um, with no lasting effects, or I hit you with a, with a piece of metal, or I gash you in the face, uh, or I set the dog on to bite you, you know, what would you prefer? There was 200 pounds of pressure in a dog's jaw and when it bites you. When you start talking about arms and, and calves and thighs, they're a little bit more fleshy, so there's a lot more for the dog to hold on to. Monkey Chambers is two hours into his patrol. His radio is quiet. It's frustrating because you know that there's crime going off somewhere. There's always crime. Somewhere somebody's committing crime. I often refer to dog handlers or myself as a shark in shallow water. Let's have a chat with this young man, shall we? You know, sharks swim looking for looking for food, don't they? I don't look for food. I look for, um, although I do occasionally grab a McDonald's. All right, it's just when you're in the middle of the road, you've got no lights on your bike, it's late. My philosophy is it, most people wandering around have an interest, really. What are they doing? Where are they going? Huh? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to um, Chinese. And depending on their answers will depend on, on my, sort of, my response, really. What are you doing there? Oh, no, I do Again, it's, it's very difficult to explain to, to people about body language yeah, and, and people's behaviour. It's, it's a big thing that you pick up on. Urinating, yeah? You can't do that here, OK? It's not allowed, OK? You, you, you cannot urinate in a public place. People get nervous near the police as well, so it's... it's he just wants to catch criminals. Uh, that is him. He just sometimes doesn't know when to stop talking. A lot of cops just drive by and ignore them. So, if he wants attention, I'll give him attention. If I was that dog, I'd have earmuffs. <laughs> In the run-up to Christmas, PC Stewart Hazard and his dogs, Razor and Midge, are on static patrol in the city centre, keeping a watchful eye on revellers. Don't open the door. <laughs> yeah, the dogs can be a bit of a babe magnet. Um, what you tend to do is, is get uh, groups of drunken women wanting to stroke the dog, and obviously that breaks the ice. They want to come and talk to you. Dogs, it's alright, he's trying to no, he's trying to bite you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About three months this one. I think it's the dogs that are more interested than me, unfortunately. <laughs> In some cases it's very fortunate. Would you like me to show you? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Can't get out. Stu is good at his job. He has got skills that seem to go unnoticed. Oh, what you don't appreciate is whatever you do to the dogs, you've got to do to the handler. Under the chin, yeah. <laughs> he just ties it well with this flirtatious t attention to certain parts of the community. Go, go around that side, then you can straight that one. Is it? Form an order leaky. Just stand the PC Hazard is winning hearts and minds when a call comes in. Victor, what's your fault? Oh, Santa doesn't exist. I hate what's, your, what's your fingers? Go ahead, please. It is just a 
just got a job coming in as a male stabbed himself in the arm and uh, threatened to set fire to his partner. <laughs> Racing across the city, he knows he's about to encounter an unstable and potentially dangerous man. I think diplomacy is a, is a trait that all police officers um, must have. I tend to try and feel for them, because if you're not diplomatic and you go in there waving the big stick, it's not going to be long before you get, uh, before you get hurt. Has the taser been authorised? Just this minute, Thank you. The job is assessed as risky enough for the possible use of the 50,000 volt taser. It may even be hazardous enough to warrant the use of the dog. PC Andy Pickersgill hears the call and travels to offer assistance. From Victor 14, to Channel 6, M Diane. Just come on a chat, Paul. On arrival, PC Hazard assesses the immediate risks. He decides to leave Razor in the car. My attitude towards Nottinghamshire Police, yeah, is that they suck. They suck the fucking useless. It's a bit depressed, isn't it? What, what, you, cut your, what you cut your arm with? Nice. I just suffer from depression. Take, take, your, take your other arm out and no, have a look at your other arm. That's fine. That's all right. I've no took it out of myself. That's part of my illness. And where's, where's daughter now? Is she fast asleep upstairs? I've got a daughter, yeah, she's asleep, all right, mate. She's oh. been asleep for the last couple of years. I can't deal with you, mate. <laughs> right, I understand that. I didn't realise that. I was pretty sure that they were just going to come in, in force, and basically uh, take me down to Brightwell and, and throw me in a pad of cell. I miss my little girl, man. You want to see me? She's perfect. She's You're going to miss her for the rest of your life, aren't you? But there's people here that need you a little bit more than that, isn't it? And one says, you know what, I blame myself. I said, well, what do you blame yourself? Hey. I don't really think much about, uh, much about police to be uh, fair with you, you know. We don't see eye to eye. You're not a bad lad, are you? I don't know, I feel like what? I'm sure you do, but I don't think you are. This certain day, they, I, they were great. They, they were, they, you know, they came. They showed interest. They didn't just come in and start putting my arms up my back and stuff like that. You know, they actually spoke to me. Are you listening? Are you listening yeah, yeah. to what she's saying? Sorted out or I'm going with my son. But if he, get, if he gets himself, if he gets himself sorted out, and that, absolutely. He needs help. Are you telling him that? And that's what we're trying to get him there. I think we wear many, many different hats. But we're always the first port of call, aren't we? It's easier to not dial 999 at 2 o'clock in the morning than to try and get a social worker out. I think we described as society's refuge collectors at one point. I take it. I've never met police officers like you, you know. Why? What do you mean by that? I don't know, you just got so much gear. We're like the other pages, we're not just here for the nasty things in life. <laughs> Monkey Chambers is now three hours into his patrol. He hasn't had a call yet. Dogs aren't deceitful. They don't tell you things with an, with an ulterior motive. Uh, whereas human beings, you know, we're deceitful little buggers, aren't we, sometimes? All right, guys, girls, ladies, we're not taking any substances or anything like that, or drinking, or, no, it's just love, is it? On a Wednesday night. <laughs> it's not love. Are you hoping it's going to be love? Well. You've got a light out at the front and you've got a brake light out at the back, so you're not doing very well to start with. I tend to find a lot of the people that I encounter at 2, 3, 4 in the morning, they tend to be wandering the streets with all sorts of weird and wonderful excuses as to why they are actually walking down the street at 3 o'clock in the morning looking into cars. You think of it, they'll come up with it. Where are you going, my girlfriend? Where does she live? I'm not sure. What's her name? Julie. Julie. Right, Julie what? I don't know. How long have you been seeing her? Two years. 
All right, OK, yeah. But you don't know where she lives and your name's Julie. And you're wandering in that direction, but you're not sure that she lives in that direction. Right, OK. There's a little bit of doubt about whether you've got insurance for the vehicle or not. If, you, if I'd, I'd had no doubt whatsoever, I'd have taken it off you tonight. You just you stopped on Artrum Street for no apparent reason. Oh, yeah, then I just um, looked like there was a new bar opening from the past earlier, so right. showing the posting window. All right. You know why they put it across there like that? To save your life. Monkey's wife, Jane, has grown accustomed to his proactive policing style. Tony never switches off. Let's just stand over there, look, out the, out the rain. Yeah. There, he once arrested someone or helped to arrest someone on a night out that we were on. Oi! Slow down! You don't like an idiot, don't you? Midnight at police headquarters in Sherwood Forest, Nottinghamshire. The two most senior members of the dog section are taking a tea break. Right, they've got the key coders for the... Uh... The tea locker down at Riverside. Yeah, we changed it last night because people have been nicking stuff. I think it's um, 2069. Cheers, mate, thank you. Three zero six nine. Two zero six nine. <laughs> I think the worst scenario for most dog men is the dreaded quiet night. We get bored, and we don't like being bored. I've been tired just lately. Just admit it. It's winter. Winter blues. As a dog handler being on your own, sometimes the worm can go in and, and turn away inside your brain because you haven't got other human interaction to say to you, no, you're talking rubbish there, or no, you're exaggerating there. Oh, come on. It's gone now. Yeah, it's done, hasn't it? It's gone. Yeah. At 1am, PC Chambers gets his chance. Residents in a housing estate on the opposite side of the city have seen a pair of youths dragging a wheelie bin around. Picture two, three, I'm uh, just coming up to it now. If officers just let me walk through and just sort of stand the peripheral, that'd be great. Do the spot right, Shut up. You can see how quiet it is, can't you? I think of myself as an old-style police officer, out on the streets, searching and looking and finding those people that are up to no good. Yeah. Yeah. Despite Monkey's plea to be left alone, the wheelie bin incident has brought other officers into the area. All these police cars around, if there's anybody here now, They'll have gone. That's actually police officers in that car. So well, you can't blame them. I mean, they just—they're bored. It's quiet. They want to catch people, but they know I'm here. Mm. You know, it was like, for God's sake, give us a break. All right, and I'll just have a wander through the houses. Monkey persuades the other cops to leave, so that the dog can track without distractions. You can walk the dog round for half an hour. I can wait half an hour. If you go softly, softly, you catch a monkey. Monkey has now been searching for the errant wheelie bin for 30 minutes. What oh, a cat and mouse, isn't it? It's just... The sheer fact that the diesel cars all clear off out the estates and suddenly I'm sat with my dog 
on a, on a wall somewhere. I'm looking at them right now. I, I tend to find rats come out of the sewers once they think that uh, things have cleared. All right, guys. All right, boys. Go. Yeah. Down! Whoa. All right, what are we doing with the wheelie bin, guys? We're just taking it back where you found it. You're taking it back where you found it? <laughs> What's your name, fella? Just shows your hands. A bit mucky there, mate, aren't they? What's on them? It looks like oil or something. Probably off of that. Is it? We don't got any oil on it. You need to be mindful that I might, as I was, walking around with my dog, be walking around somewhere else that you're up to no good, because that's what I think you're doing, you're up to no good. Why am I doing out to no good? I've got money, I get paid tomorrow. Fine. I want to go and get some most, backer. Most normal people, well, backer's not that way. I don't know any shops that way whatsoever. There's only one place that way, BP What's Garage. That? Why don't you go into town? Why don't you go into town? From in town and then time. turn right along just for a while. You have to cut through here with a wheelie bin. Because we live there. You've got an answer for everything, haven't you? Yeah, because I'm telling the truth. Off you go then. Get out of my way. Take your wheelie bin and put it somewhere safe. An average night can see dog officers attend tasks from the mundane to the traumatic. Steve Fury responds to a 999 call. An incident that definitely doesn't require a dog, but does need an experienced officer at high speed. Speak to five for um, traffic means diverting city bound down West LA. The driver is unconscious and trapped under the steering wheel, and a fire engine will be required to cut him free. Then you guys see the accident itself? It is stressful. It's stressful on many levels. We see things that people wouldn't really want to see. The driver has life-threatening spinal injuries. His passenger is alive but covered in blood. With the other emergency services now on the scene, PC Fury goes back to patrol. Oh, fella. Oh. Hello, boy. You good, fella. Forty-four minutes later, there's a call to another accident. Two one two. It's right on the junction of Daisy Road. Jesus. Nottingham's dog section are there for all eventualities. Guys, you're right. What's happened? You've had a crash, yeah? In the car with your mate. You're all right, we're going to look after you. You have to have a mechanism to cope with it. Mine tends to be humour. Um, some people would, we may turn around and think that I was sick at times, but, but it's the way I cope with things. Just keep away from me, yeah? <laughs> If you didn't have um, friends and family to go and have a, a drink with every now and again to, to, to release yourself, you, you, you wouldn't cope. You, you'd just end up a, a gibbering wreck in a corner somewhere, you know, rocking backwards and forwards. Is yeah. it snowing? No, it's your, it's your down jacket, mate. Why is it snowing? It's your jacket, mate. If you try and just stay still... Like, I'm trying. I'm yeah, really, doing, really cold. It's because you're in a bit of shock, yeah? You're dealing with those people, you're dealing with the relatives and the aftermath of the accident. Uh, and you do take it home. You <laughs> When his close friend and colleague was killed, his wife was the first person Andy Pickersgill turned to. The anniversary of Jed's death every year has, has a great impact on, on Andy. He never really did show much emotion, um, probably only to me, and even then I have to drill it out of him, because I think it's good to show your emotions, but yeah, it, it truly did upset him. The most support and the best support you'll ever have is from your family. You know, they are the first buffer to everything you do. They take a lot of stress out of you and make you realise just why you're actually going and doing what you're doing anyway.
Tony Chambers has been married to Jane for 23 years. When Tony comes home, we share everything. If it's a shift where he comes in at two o'clock in the morning, we sit until whatever time he needs to, talking about it and working it through. Um, because without sharing it, well, that helps Tony cope. One, two, three. Yeah, you do see some horrific things and, and you go home and everything's normal and sometimes then the wife might say, oh, you didn't put that away, did you, this morning? Or, you know, you left that lying around and, and I've just, you think, oh, you know, if only you know. You know, you don't know you're born. Come on, boys. You'll have lots of police officers tell you they, you know, they do lots of hours, they do this, that and the other. But they don't take the work home with them uh, in the way that we do. We, t we take the work with us everywhere we go, um, apart from on holiday, because he's not got a pet passport. For 10 years, Stuart Hazard lived here with his wife, family and the dogs. I split up with my, my wife of 10 years. I've got three lovely little boys. I've got friends and everything else that help me out and pull me through things. I am lonely. If I'm, if I'm honest. When you finish a job or finish dealing with a member of the public or finish dealing with an offender, well, I tend to self-reflect. It is just a job. However, it is quite a stressful job. Well, obviously in the past when the um, wife was here, be able to offload problems or talk about jobs you've been to or some horrific things that you've seen. At the moment, I can't do that. I'd equate ourselves to swans. On the surface, everything is nice and smooth. Uh, yet underneath, you're paddling like bloody hell. I believe the same as everybody else under the uniform. The dog section currently comprises 16 frontline police officers and their dogs. It's not actually a ball patch, it's a uh, solar panel for a sex machine. Come here, you, you useless beast. The dog section is a family, yeah. But as you can imagine, a family of 15, 16 brothers can be, <laughs> it can be quite fractious. So are you, Smelly? You know, everybody's jealous of everybody else and everyone's trying to outdo everybody else. Yes, look at that. <laughs> In 2011, the section lost five handlers and ten dogs to cutbacks. Now they're facing another round of cuts. Not a lot of people knew about A19. How would I describe it? It's like a little known illness to which there's no cure. Contractual clause A19 means that any officer with 30 years service can be forced into retirement, even if they want to stay on. The dog section is a pack, and A19 is going to get rid of the older dogs who have got all the experience and wisdom. Good boy, good fella. Stuart Hazard is making plans for life after the dog section. You'll probably turn your hand to most things, really. If you open a tea shop, a nursery, buy a motorbike, and I'd travel all over Europe initially. Uh, light motorcycling. Steve Feary will reach his 30 years in four years' time. Finding clean cups is always the hardest thing. I'm good with my hands, so uh, I think it'll probably be a handyman. I think there's more work, more pay. Decking, garden landscaping, um, fixing things. Boilers might be a bit too much because you, you take them out and put a new one in nowadays. Andy Pickersgill has just over a year. I've rapidly come to the conclusion the best thing for me to do is just really enjoy the next 12, 13 months. Lady keeping fit for the next 12 months. 
me not doing anything stupid for the next 12 months. When he knows nothing else, really. And he'll only be 49-ish, so quite early to retire. Rookie Monkey Chambers has years before he needs to think about another career. Do you think he should enter politics? No. The man arrested for menacing job centre staff was released without charge. No weapon was found. Oh, good boy. Yes, you fucking are. The suspect, tracked by Razor, was charged with failure to attend a drugs interview and fined. The wheelie bin, too, have not struck again. Steve Abbott has lost some feeling in his right arm. The surgeon chap said, it's not bit you, it's eating you. It's like more like a shark bite. And Stuart Hazard is tracking. My quest for love, I'm not very good at the moment, so if there's any young ladies out there who want a well-trained man, who must like dogs, name addresses and a photograph on a postcard to Channel 4, please. Rural coppers. Oh, there's a squirrel. I'm really pleased to go along to meet us and say, no, there's been no crime since your last meeting, three months ago. Keeping the peace in the countryside. <laughs> wow. One, you go straight home and they fighting with nobody and they bother with anyone. Kiss. No, I'm not kissing. Another quality episode in the day in the life of a country policeman, yeah. <laughs> You can see life through the eyes of nurses in Confessions of a Nurse. Check in your pulse on 4OD at channel4.com. Tap us 11 to 9 from the makers of 24, but better, Claire Danes is the paranoid star of Homeland. Well, next up, true story is a girl who's been stalked for years online, but the shocker is who the stalker turns out to be.